Good morning everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Yen if you're new to the channel and we milk about 300 cows here in central Saskatchewan. Today is the first day of kind of a nice warm week of weather. We're getting absolutely spoiled for the middle of January. Uh, we're getting close to around zero degrees, so right on that freezing line. So it's gonna be pretty warm for winter out here, which is awesome. So with that, we got a bunch of jobs lined up. We're gonna be drying off 26 cows today. So these 26 cows are gonna be uh, dried off from milk today. They were just milk cows, probably milked on average for 305 days. And now they're gonna be going outside for two months. So we wait till a bit of a warmer day than minus 30 to take milk cows out of the barn and put them outside because when the cows are in the barn, they don't actually put on a winter coat and uh, they need that winter coat to stay warm when it's minus 30 outside. So if you get a week of warm weather, you can put the cows outside in kind of mild weather. They definitely will start to put that winter coat on right away as they go outside. And uh, hopefully by the time it gets cold again, they'll have a nice warm winter coat. It is pretty crazy how quickly they can put that coat on. But anyway, I'm grabbing group two, bringing them up into the holding area so we can milk them. And then once that is done, we're gonna go dry those cows off. So let's get milking done this morning. So that's all of group two in the holding area there. These are the 24 cows are drying off today. They're all being milked for that last time. So all the cows get a dry cow treatment as well. Two of them. Uh, the first one is a antibiotic that's gonna make sure that she has a healthy dry period. And the second one is called a teat blocker. So it's like a little bit of paste that goes inside of her teat and uh, blocks any material, any cow crap, any straw from getting inside the teat. Cause you never know for a two month dry period. Uh, if something gets in her udder, that's gonna get infected and that's also gonna wreck her udder. So we don't want that to happen at all. So they're all gonna get these treatments and they go up in their teeth. So in the last video, I think I showed you guys, there's still a tarp on that side door. Now we got an overhead door. Come on, ladies. Hey I know it's cold. Hey, 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 hey. 
Right on, we got those ladies, the group of 28 cows into the corrals and they are dried off. The first job of the day is done. Milking's done. Now I'm feeding cows. So I first come into the barn here and I'm checking to see how much is left. We can see here on the right side of the feed alley, there is quite a bit of feed left over. So I'm gonna have to feed this group a lot less today. The reason why there is so much left over here still is because yesterday we separated all those cows to go dry and uh, we just kind of miscalculated a little bit by probably 300 kgs how much less we should feed them. So we'll scrape that out probably, mix it in another feed load and uh, dispose of it like that. I will just feed them a little bit less today. wagon again for the milk cows they got their second load ready to go and dad's actually gonna take over and he's gonna put the water in there and dump it in front of the milk cows because I got to go to the city and uh, pick up some spare parts and do some other stuff so we'll come back hopefully uh, we'll be able to fix what needs to get fixed out here and then see what else we got to get up to today yet just got back from the city and we're starting the afternoon shift I'm about to grab group one but I just want to quickly show you guys dad's in the wheel loader in the straw pack here and he's cleaning out this straw pack. It's an awesome day. It's right around that freezing temperature. So the snow outside, some of it's already melting right now. We're nowhere near spring. It's just a warm week in January, but he's taking this opportunity to uh, clean out the straw pack this afternoon. So we'll get the drone up in the air, show you guys that. And then I'm gonna grab group one and uh, bring them into the holding area right there. And we'll get milking. Another thing I'm doing this afternoon is putting sand bedding in the beds in the freestyle barn. It's a busy afternoon, but we're gonna get it done. at the back of our cow barn right now almost ready to scrape i was just gonna hop in the skid steer and i heard a really loud racketing noise and it came from one of these exhaust chimneys a big chunk of ice fell from the ceiling you can see there's a bunch of small chunks of ice everywhere and uh 
That's because there's ice buildup on the top of those chimneys. There's another piece that just went through. And it's falling in now that the weather just all of a sudden got super warm. So super cold uh, for a couple weeks straight there. That ice builds up. I'll put the drone shot so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but that ice just builds up and builds up when it's really cold outside. And all of a sudden now we get a really nice day out and that stuff starts to fall into the chimney. I'm sure lots falls outside. Not 100%, some does fall into the chimney and all those big chunks of ice fall right on that fan and they just make a terrible loud noise. It definitely freaks the cows out a little bit. I just definitely saw like 20 cows quickly run away from this because it was pretty loud. But it uh, looks like they calmed down pretty quick. Hopefully uh, we don't lose any fan blades. I have had to go up there in the past and replace some of those fan blades. It's kind of inevitable. Not really anything you can do about it other than uh, have the fan blades ready when you need them. Right on, the alleys are scraped and the beds are full of sand, so we are now gonna let group two back in their pen. So I'm grabbing three fresh cows off of our close-up packs they calved today, but uh, we could just see the one cow. She was eating her placenta, which is the sac that's around the baby when the baby's in the cow. And uh, there's a couple of different reasons or theories why the cows eat this naturally. Uh, the one is they want to eat it, they want to get rid of it so that predators in the wild can't smell that placenta and then know there's a fresh baby so that they can eat it. And another reason, it's got a ton of nutrients, a ton of vitamins in there and it helps the cow produce some colostrum which is really healthy for the calf. So those are a couple of reasons why the cow eats it. It is kind of weird to eat that sack in my opinion. It's not something I would do but uh, to each their own I guess. So this is the side dad cleaned this afternoon. It's always awesome when it's nice and clean. So we finished milking cows there. Everything went pretty smooth at the end of milking. And I was about to grab the skid steer to push up the feed in the straw pack barn. And I noticed a bunch of fan shrapnel on the ground in the center drive through of our freestall barn. So this is it. That's just a blade. And this is the cover for one of these center hubs that basically mounts to all the blades that will be around it so once you see that on the ground that's some pretty bad news uh the ice that fell into this exhaust chimney was just a little bit too much and that thing looks like it fully self-destructed itself uh it must have been pretty loud in here for a bit i imagine but uh yeah that thing is uh complete right off it looks like we're gonna need quite a few spare parts to get that thing fixed that's gonna be in the next video probably it's that weather, man, that cold weather, the ice builds up and then when it starts to thaw, it's always something, man. Anyway, that'll be a problem for another day. I'm gonna push up the feed in our straw pack barn now. Pack barn feed is pushed up. Looks like the Laylee Juno is having some issues finding the charging station here. Basically, that Laylee Juno is our feed pusher, goes along the feed, pushes it up, and this eye, it scans the wall to its left and it can basically stay, you know, 200 millimeters off of that wall or whatever you set it to and it's not getting close enough to the two uh, charging prongs right here. These two prongs are supposed to touch on the Lele Juno right here. And once it starts charging, that's how it knows when to stop. And obviously it's not making a good connection right now because the Juno just drives past it and uh, it keeps looking for that charger. So it's not making a good contact. And uh, recently my dad actually took an angle grinder to these things and cleaned them off. They almost look a little bit dirty right now, but I don't think that's the main issue. I think they're clean enough to make a good contact with the Juno. Biggest problem, we have these two by fours right here that are basically perfectly far enough away from that eye on the Juno to line it up perfectly with the charging dock. And for some reason, this stick was here and kind of fell, I think, and just fell out a little bit too far. And now that eye is scanning the stick instead of an inch further back where it should be scanning for uh, this two by four. And now it's driving past the charging dock. Such a small finicky thing and um, easy to figure out. The reason why this stick was moved by, this extension cord was put here for the uh, heaters for the door when it was cold out. But um, you always gotta watch, you always gotta watch everything. But since this is moved out of the way, it'll scan this two by four instead of the stick and uh, that thing should be good to go. Does that all make sense to you, Cheetah? You're gonna do that next time instead of me? 
This is number 25. Her name's Cheetah. She's a sweetheart. Just a good girl. <laughs> so we manually parked it on the charging station and now it should be good to go. It's gonna go on the next route at 8 o'clock and uh, start up again. Look at all the ladies that are watching us work tonight. There's two more uh, tame ladies in the barn. So I got Maxime to lift me up here. He's uh, in the loader there. I just wanted to have a good look at this fan. Yeah, that motor's pretty hot. So I just wanted to come up here and uh, turn the switch off to it. So this is gonna turn power off to it. You can see all the supports that actually hold the motor up. They are attached here usually. They're snapped clean off and the brackets from the motor are actually snapped off. So that's pretty crazy. This thing must have been pretty violently shaking. It looks like there's one arm on the back actually holding this motor up, so that's good. But uh, yeah, this thing is just completely destroyed. We pretty much need an entire new fan or center hub for sure. The brackets on this motor, everything. So we'll see what that looks like. So that's another costly thing, just with the weather, something to deal with. Anyway, we're good now, fan's off. We'll fix this another day. So this afternoon we went to the city and uh, this is what I picked up. It's a new hose for our pasteurizer here. This hose, it's leaking. You can see they taped it up and uh, tried stopping it from leaking, but better just put a new hose on there. So I'm gonna replace that this evening here. So the pasteurizer is on right now. I'm just gonna turn it off. Perfect. And then I'm gonna close the valve here. Closed, 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 which will close it off to this pipe right here. Now I can take that pipe off and this tank won't start draining like crazy. We definitely do not want that. Awesome, we got that hose loose from the end coupler and the other end. They are pretty dirty though. That's just some old milk buildup uh, that kind of makes its way in there. We're gonna give those ends a good clean and then we'll get the new hose on there. Awesome, I think we uh, got it switched around properly looking pretty good just gonna clean up the mess we made here with all the milk and uh, that'll be done for this project uh, another thing that I want to fix here this evening quickly is a liner on one of our milkers uh, this thing got hooked around a heifer's leg and she kicked it like crazy I heard it all the way in the back of the barn and uh, she kind of ripped one of the liners here you can see it right there. And uh, that's sucking a bit of air through. That's no good. Um, if there's a little bit of leak in this liner, which is just the inside rubber liner, you guys will see in a second here when I take it off. But if it's leaking some air in there, the cow might not milk out so well. So it's incredibly important that we replace this right away. So we go to our spare parts shelf here behind the bulk tank room and uh, get the spare liner. So you can see we have a ton of spare parts for those milkers because all 24 of them need to be going always. So we grabbed the spare liner. That's just gonna be replaced. This one's good. Doesn't have a hole right there. Uh, we also got a spare spout. That's the uh, spray that applies the post dip iodine, the disinfectant to the cow's teats as soon as she's being done milk. So that's what that little nozzle actually looks like. So go ahead and take it off and replace it. The old one.
All right. So just like that, got the new liner on there. You can see it's got a little bit of that powder on there still, but uh, that should be good to go. Well, it's just after nine in the evening here, and uh, that means I'm gonna right away check the cows and uh, see if there's any calves, push up the feed, and do that final late night barn check. And uh, then we'll be completely done for the day. So that's gonna be it. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. And I uh, hope to see you guys in the next one.